Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. We continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord.
Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by your grace we may walk in your way, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall never travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together select verses from Psalm 146. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. A reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must, must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. 
As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. expects 
the Messiah to accomplish. John sends words by his disciples. Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? John wonders, was he mistaken? Is Jesus truly the Messiah? Is he the one who has come to rescue the people? Or perhaps challenge Jesus to act, to go and make it known, to challenge the powers of the world, to go out and act in that messianic way to save, to rescue the people, to save him from this imprisonment, to save him from death. Now, John expects this Messiah to act in the way that the kings of old, that the ways that the people have been rescued throughout history, with miracles, with wonders, to rescue the people from slavery as John or as Moses had rescued, to, to conquer as the kings of Solomon and David and Saul, to show their strength and their might. John wants to see the Messiah overturn these evil empires that exist in Rome, the ways that those in power have, have misused and abused it. John longs to be rescued from the prison in which he finds himself. And he wonders, are you the one? Or am I to wait for another? But we who sit on this side of the cross, this side of the empty tomb, we know what Jesus has come to do. We know what John, waiting in that prison, did not. That yes, Jesus is the Messiah. That yes, Jesus has come to save the world. But his power rests not in military strength or in some kind of political or governmental overthrow, but rather in, in, an, in an in eternal, in a spiritual dimension that will save us for all time, that will save us from the sins, from the evil in the world, that will save us from death and hell. Jesus will save John, but not from the earthly death that awaits him, not from the prison that holds him fast. Jesus instead will save him from, from hell, from sin, from eternal damnation. And along the way, Jesus as Messiah will practice a ministry that John and the other followers have longed for. That Jesus will practice this ministry that will stand up to those political leaders and authorities of the day. Jesus will gather with those who suffer, with the outcast, the broken, the poor, the deaf, the blind, the lame. He will surround himself with the marginalized and reach out to those who have been cast to the edges and bring them back. He will help them to know that God is with them and that the kingdom of heaven truly is theirs. Jesus will bring hope and healing to the people of his time and place. He will fulfill what we heard from the prophets, that the deaf will hear, the blind will see, the lame shall leap like a deer, that the people will again have hope. Jesus will save God's people. He will save John. He will save us. And yet, this response that is given to John sometimes feels like it falls short. Even though this response that Jesus brings is one of eternal consequences, is one that truly gives us what we need now and forever. But still, there are times that we cannot stop, I cannot stop, but join John in this question. 
in this question of asking Jesus, yes, but, yes, Jesus, you have saved the world. Yes, you give us life eternally with you. Yes, you forgive our sins. Yes, you always promise to be with us. But, but Jesus, there is still disease in our world. There is still war taking place. There are still innocent lives who are suffering. There is still famine in this world. There are still those in our places who struggle with disease and heartache and hunger. There are still places where people are mistreated and exploited, where injustice exists again and again. There are times that we call out to God, can't you do something? Are you truly the Messiah or should we wait for another? And then I hear in my question, I hear it rebound back at myself. Can't you do something? And I think, can't I? not do something. Cannot we, as the people of God, as the followers in this world, as those who know that the kingdom of God has broken in but is not quite here yet, can't we engage, be a part of this ministry of God? Can't we also take part and do something to answer those questions, to tackle those issues, to see that the suffering in this world comes to an end, or at least is lessened by just a little bit. After all, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one who has taken care of the, the big things for sake of the argument. Jesus is the one who has done the important work of saving us. We are free, free from sin and death and hell. We are saved. We don't have to do these things now to earn our way. We get to do them. We are free to work in this kingdom of God, to do this ministry that Jesus began, that he modeled for us. We are free to do what we can to tackle those issues of war and famine and disease and exploitation and injustice and hunger and suffering. We are free to do this work of God here in our midst in whatever ways we can, in whatever small ways we, we might help others to know this love of God in whatever ways we might be able to help those who find themselves imprisoned the way that John was. Maybe not just by walls that incarcerate us, but the prisons that hold us fast. The prisons of war and famine and hunger and disease and injustice. The wars of loneliness. The prisons of, of isolation and prejudice and hatred. We can do this work of God in, in little ways, in fragments that add up to truly do this work of God. We can stand up for those who have no voice. We can speak out for those who cannot speak out for themselves. We can address these issues of human trafficking and exploitation. We can help those who have none to have something. We can help to bring food to those who are hungry. We can work to address the issues of climate change so that those places that have been filled with floods or drought where they cannot grow food for themselves might be able to prosper once more. We can do this work of God. Even if it's something as simple as lifting up a phone and calling a friend so that they know that they are not alone. We can do this work of God. We can engage in this ministry so that they may know that yes, the 
kingdom of God is broken in. Jesus is the Messiah that has come into this world to save us. This has begun in this place. And we wait now not, not to be saved, but wait for Christ to come again. We sit in our own spaces and we ask these tough questions. And we hear these answers that God speaks to us, trusting that Jesus has freed us to, to step in and do this work with him to engage in these places where we can help bring about this kingdom of God, where we can help others to know this presence of God. It is our turn as we ask this question and we hear that answer, yes, Jesus is the Messiah, because now through us, the blind can see, the lame can walk, the deaf can hear. Those who are lonely and in prison have been freed. The kingdom of God is broken in. And now we point the way with John. We point the one way to the one who has saved us, to Jesus, who is the Messiah. Amen. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your Spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. 
Revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. We especially pray for those in Ukraine. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss. We especially pray for Carol, Vivian, Virginia, Albert, Richard, Roger, Nancy, and the families of Deb and Jack. Bless Jake and Kendra's family with new life. Strengthen and protect healthcare workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all the saints, that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you.
Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust in this gift of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, for wherever we are gathered, God is there. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thanks be to God.